Hello, this is Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. In today's episode, we are doing a fiber optic star ceiling. Check this out. I'm going to show you step by step from the very beginning. Let's get right to it. So these are getting installed into drop ceiling tiles. This is part of our job that we're doing here for the University of Toronto Scarborough campus. Here is the fabric that we are using. This is a black crushed velvet, which the clients chose. And there's just some old adhesive that they had um, on these ceiling tiles. So I'm just making sure that that's all scraped off. So we have a nice flat, smooth surface on these ceiling tiles to adhere our fabric to. So I'm just getting the fabric cut to size, leaving a couple inches around each side for overhangs. We can wrap it around. And here's the spray adhesive that I'm using. I'm just using the Gorilla Glue spray adhesive. The 3M Super 77 spray adhesive works really well as well. So I'm just applying a full coat of the adhesive to the front face of the ceiling tile. And you wanna give that like a minute to get tacky before you put the fabric on. Here is the stapler and the staples that we're using and the little air compressor. You can use a handheld stapler if you like, but I just use the air compressor stapler. It's a little bit more efficient. So we can get our fabric put on, just making sure there's no wrinkles on that front face. And then I can flip it over and just staple around to the back side just to keep that fabric secure. And once we work our way around the entire panel, then that tile is upholstered. So we're gonna go ahead and upholster every tile in this ceiling. We're leaving the outer perimeter because we're gonna be doing some upper base traps, uh, which will be probably our next video on this channel in a week or two. And there you can see we're just putting that upholstered tile back in place. And now we're just going to go ahead and repeat this process for the whole room. Um, not the most glamorous part, but it's just uh, just repetitive. And yeah, so just spray adhesive on the tile, make sure it's nice and flat, put the fabric on, staple it secure, and reinstall. Here are the actual fiber optic assemblies. You can see the actual bundle of the fiber optic cables right there. This kit has 550 um, fiber optic strands. We're using three kits for this room. That's the light engine and you can see the remote and the power source there. So here's the actual close-up of the actual fiber optic strands themselves and there is the collar which connects to the light engine. So what I'm doing here is since we're doing three separate light engines I'm just getting all of these strands um, set up into four equal parts because it's going to be going to go into four tiles. So roughly just a little bit over a hundred stars per tile. So I'm just setting up the collar right there, right above that vocal booth. That's going to be kind of our distribution center for the power. That's where all the light engines are going to stay. So I'm just routing that cable all the way to this front left corner of the room. This is going to be the first quadrant that we work on. So there you can see that fiber optic cable just above the drop ceiling there and just working its way right above those lights where the vocal booth is. That's where we're gonna be plugging everything in from right there. And you can see the cable's just running up and down. That's gonna be where our first tile is. And you can see I have all of these bundles separated into four equal parts so that we have an equal distribution of lights on all four of those ceiling tiles. So I just marked out that that direction is towards the setup and then the other space will be towards the wall. And I'm just marking out right now where the base trap is going to go in the future because we don't need to put any stars there because that base trap will be covering up that portion of the ceiling tile. So I'm just marking that out so I know where my stars need to go. And you can see we have everything routed and all of the strands are ready there. And now we can start the process of poking these strands through. That's just a little sharp poker that I'm using. And... I will show the rest of the gear that we need, but just we need the poker, we need some scissors and a hot glue gun. So what I like to do is I like to cut a 45 degree angle on the actual fiber optic strand before I poke it through. This helps it poke through the fabric um, without having to just struggle with the strand because these strands, um, they come with just the doll, just a straight edge on the end of it. So I just use the scissors, cut it on an angle so it has a pointy edge that way it can poke through the fabric a lot easier. You'll see that process more close up right here. So I just poke through the ceiling tile 
and through the fabric. I cut my 45 degree angle on that strand of fiber optic cable, and then I can just poke it through. And that sharp point on the cable helps it poke through the fabric. And you can see I can just slide that through. And that's it. The process itself is fairly simple. It's just extremely tedious um, and very time consuming. Um, this project, we used three of those light engines at 550 strands each. I believe it was around 1,650 strands in total. Um, long process, very tedious, very repetitive. I suggest having some music or your favorite podcast or whatever you like to listen to in the background um, just to help the time pass, right? It's a very long process, but there you can see we got that tile all poked through. And now we just simply glue gun on the opposite side. This keeps the strand in place so that it doesn't retract um, out of the panel when you're handling it or when you're reinstalling it back in the ceiling. Um, and it also keeps it secure after you cut the strands flush with the front face of the ceiling tile. Um, this is a very important step and just standard glue gun. Um, I use the low temperature, um, but your glue gun may vary. And that's it, that's the process. Just lots and lots of poking. I did the outer perimeter and then just kind of did a, a random pattern on the inside just to make sure that I got full coverage. There you can see that tile is fully poked through with all the, with all the strands. I left the base trap area there clear of any strands and there that's how it looks on the bottom side with just all the strands poking all the way through. And I can just reinstall that up in the ceiling and I can get the other, the next bundle ready to go and just route it into um, where that drop ceiling tile is. And as I go along, I'm just zip tying or taping the rest of the bundle um, up into where the drop ceiling area is just to make sure it's out of the way and everything stays nice and secure. Nothing's gonna pull out. And we just repeat and continue this process, lots of gluing. This would go a lot faster if you had another person helping out. If you had someone gluing while you're poking, it would be a lot faster. So you can see we're just putting that bundle, taping that bundle up so that it doesn't get caught while we reinstall this ceiling tile. And just take your time. It is quite um, quite cumbersome with all the with all of the strands in your face while you're <laughs> trying to put the tiles back in place, but it's all doable. Just take your time and just be careful that you don't pull anything out. And there you can see we have all of our tiles in. So the tiles that have the the sprinkler system, and then there's a tile above the whisper booth there that has the motion detector. Um, some of these tiles, the clients decided that we are not going to put the fiber optics in those tiles and we're not doing any above the booth there uh, just for access reasons. Um, and since the HVAC machinery is there, um, if people or techs ever need to access the HVAC, um, that tile, those tiles are completely open and available. So you can see these are the three bundles of the light engines all routed to where these lights are. This was just a nice area where we had some space to actually mount the light engines and it was close to just the center of the room to distribute out. Here are the light engines. You can see that is the collar, that's the light source. There's a little set screw there where you just put the collar in and then you can screw that set screw down to secure it in place. And then those lights actually rotate. That's what gives these stars like the twinkle effect. It's quite cool. And there's the receivers on that end for the Bluetooth and for the remote and the power supply where we plug in the power supply right there. And these kits were just off of Amazon. So there you can see that's where that collar is gonna screw in. You can see that metal collar on the actual bundle of strands just fits right into the collar on the light engine and that we just secured in place with the set screw. So this is the process of screwing in the collar. So it simply just fits right into that space in the light engine. We screw down the set screw to secure it in place. And once that's tight, that's it. It's as simple as that. And then we are ready to, and then we are ready to mount uh, these light engines and plug them in.
So what I did is I just had a scrap piece of wood and we just used some Velcro just to um, set up these light engines in a local localized point. And then they are just a wall outlet plug. So right now we are just about to test the very first one. We're gonna find out if it works. And it works. That was a big relief. Very happy that after all that work that everything is working out well. And we can get the rest of the light engines set up now as well. That was the first quadrant that we plugged in. Here you can see how it looks from above. So you can see that bundle is all lit up and distributing to each of those strands and they poke through the ceiling tile there and everything lights up, the colors all change. Really cool system here. And it's worth the effort if you want to undertake a project like this. Just know going into it that it takes a lot of time. This is very tedious. Um, but the steps themselves are simple. It's just a time-consuming process. So there we go. We're just getting the other light engines set up. And then we will test those ones out as well. Make sure everything's plugged in. And all the Velcro is on the light engines just to keep everything secure and in place. That way when we're snipping and if everyone anyone ever does have to remove these tiles to access that the light engines won't move around or get disturbed so there's all three light engines tested and working you can see that the whole strands light up and now basically the only step left to do is to cut these strands flush to the ceiling tile so that the stars are just emanating from the actual tile itself and not uh just dangling in everyone's faces right so there's another look of the light sources and really cool effect that these have with that twinkle with the rotating engines there. It's really cool. So I just separated out into quadrants A, B, and C, and I just had everything labeled just so that if we ever do need to replace anything down the line, we know uh, which quadrant belongs where and what we need to do if anything ever needs any servicing or replacing. So now we're about to start snipping. I like to use a nail clipper. It just allows um, your hand to be below the actual fiber optic cable. It's just a easier way to kind of see what you're doing and be able to cut everything. So we just snip right there and you can see that the light will emanate right where you cut it. So I like to leave like a millimeter or two uh, just so that like the fiber optic strand doesn't get caught underneath the fabric um, you want to make sure that we are this since this is a thin fabric you can cut a bit more closer to the fabric um, if you're using a thicker fabric that has uh, some pile or like a little bit of thickness to it um, but with this really thin crushed velvet uh, we cut just like a millimeter or two proud of the actual surface and you can see the effect that it leaves there and this is the best step to be able to actually reveal the star ceiling very, very rewarding, especially after all that hard work. And my shoulders were on fire <laughs> for this step with my arms above my head the whole time, uh, cutting all these strands. So be prepared for that as well. And there you can see the final product. That is all 1,650 strands. We have that HVAC area open right now just for access. And now we're just testing out some of the cool colors, some of the different modes that they have here. There's like mu music mode, there's flashing modes, kind of fading, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. Pretty typical of like your LED light systems. And these are all controlled by an app on your phone and also by a physical remote if you need to. So now the last things to do just to tie up the ceiling for this room is just those last two tiles, uh, the tile that has the sprinkler system and the tile that has that motion detector. So since I can't take these tiles out of the ceiling, I'm just stapling the fabric on in place and just cutting off the excess and just tucking everything back up inside so it has a nice finished look and tucking underneath that lip of the sprinkler as well uh, just to give this a nice professional finished look. And just trimming off the excess there, getting everything tucked into that ceiling track. And since these ones won't move once it's done, it's done, it's in there. Same thing with this one that has the motion sensor. There was a screw on collar on the opposite side of the sensor. So I just loosened that so I can get a little bit more space to tuck the fabric underneath the motion sensor. 
And once it was underneath, then I just tightened that screw again. You can see I'm just cutting out a space for that motion sensor. And once I got it poked back through, I can just tighten that screw again and the motion sensor is secured once again. So just cutting all the excess off. This whisper room made for a nice, uh, <laughs> a nice spot for me to lay down just to access everything. And uh, there we go. So there is the finished ceiling. We have all the tiles upholstered. All of the tiles that the clients wanted to have the star ceiling in are in. And we are gonna test once again with the remote right here. And I'm gonna turn these lights on and get a look at the effect. So cool. The client was super happy with the result. I'm super happy with the result, especially after all that hard work. It's really rewarding when it pays off and our clients are happy, which means we're happy and another cool job for the books. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope you learned something. Really hope you check out the rest of our videos on this channel. We have a few more projects to do for University of Toronto Scarborough campus here. We're going to be doing the base traps in the upper portion of this room. That's the last thing we have to do in this room before this room is all finished up. They are going to be adding a custom desk. Uh, they're going to be adding some more gear. They have a bunch of cool stuff that they're going to be doing on their end. And stay tuned. Maybe a few months from now, we can do a cool studio tour of the whole facility, the whole facility there at University of Toronto Scarborough campus radio forward. Check them out and hope you enjoyed. Very cool effect there. I love that twinkle in the stars. I could just hang out in this room and just chill, not even work on any music, just, <laughs> just look at the stars. Awesome. This is Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. We're going to be bringing you lots more. Stay tuned. Peace out.